thank you very much for, for being here. Good evening. Hope you're all right. Hope you've had a good day. Um, and I hope that this next 45 minutes um, acts as just a moment for you just to press pause and just to kind of forget about the to-do to lists and anything that's been going on through the day and just um, enjoy um, a moment together. So I'm delighted now to introduce Mariella. Mariella Vela is um, the coordinator for animation and formation in Malta, a member of the district Lasallian Mission Council and the Lasallian Mission Committee in Malta. We refer to these structures as MEL committees and councils. Mariella has a lifelong experience of the Lasallian charism and a deep understanding and love for today's topic that reflects her journey as teacher, as year head, assistant head, head teacher, and national leader in Catholic education in Malta. So I'll pass over to Mariella now. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. I'll share my screen straight away so we can begin. When you first come to a Lasallian school, you frequently hear the words, let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. That is what our slide is showing us, okay? So these are words which um, you would see in all Lasallian schools practically all over the world. And this is a practice which began from the very first schools, begun by the La Salle, when every half hour a student tinkled a small bell and then said these words. And um, this was followed by a period of silence. And nowadays we say, let us adore him at the end. So I'd like to begin today's uh, presentation with a prayer based on these words. All right, so let us begin. Let. Let is an invitation. You are not forced to come. You are not forced to enter the presence of God, but it is an enabling, empowering experience. Us. We are aware that we are a group of people together. It's not just me, but us, even if separated by many miles and linked only by technology. Remember, we recall, we bring to mind an awareness of who we are and what we are today because of our past. That we are the present simple of the verb to be. We are mindful of the here and now, the present. As the Kinbury team say, live in the now. In the holy presence of God, we acknowledge that with us there is our maker, whatever our understanding of him is. Brother Luke Son writes, we who are limited in space and time are being asked to grasp, some, grasp in faith and experience as real, the presence of God who is outside space and time. And this should put us in touch with our own identity as human beings and with the ultimate goal that is our eternal destiny. So we pause a bit and then we say, let us adore him. And we finish our prayer by the popular Luke Jesus in our hearts forever. Can I have a Maltese volunteer to read the Maltese version, please? I'm seeing Silvana Cacciatolo. I'm sorry, I'm seeing you. Can you unmute and read the Maltese version? <laughs> yes, of course. Uh, yes, Jesuf Albna al and can I have an Irish participant? I can't see any Irish participants. Would anybody like to read the... Otherwise, you and you'll have to come to okay. the rest. Mar at Yusa in our Gree, good job. Great, name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. So the Lasallian journey continues. So I am Mariella. And yes, I began my La Salle journey quite a number of years ago when I became a teacher at De La Salle College, Malta. Um, however, it's been an amazing journey, which has linked me up with some amazing people in the district. The district is uh, England and Ireland, as well as the region, that's uh, Europe and the Mediterranean. I'm also um, a mother. I'm married, I'm a mother of two grown-up children who are Lasallians as well. 
I added this short biographical note because today your story is important too. Who you are, how you came to be here today, what you think and believe in, your values, your hopes, your dreams. They are all part of our next step in the Lasallian journey together. So if you recall, we first had a um, welcome to the Lasallian family. That was our first session together. And then a glimpse at the life of St. John Baptist de La Salle. And the last time we met with Brian and Idel, um, th these two delve deeper into what it means to be a Lasallian by looking at the five core principles. And today we are going to look at one of them a bit more closely. The core principle, which is faith in the presence of God as we continue to understand what this means and therefore what Lasallian spirituality means, because this is the added dimension that makes our schools distinctive. There's a reason why we do things the way we do. So get ready, the journey is going to continue. Let's take a look at the two words first, okay? Lasallian, spirituality. The word spirituality, a definition can easily be read on the screen, Okay, one of the definitions is relating to religion or religious belief. But when you add the adjective Lasallian to it, it, it uh, takes on a different, uh, a different meaning. So what exactly does the adjective Lasallian add to, to the word spirituality? And here I refer to an article written by brother Gerald Rummery. He writes that it brings a particular flavor or indeed emphasis because it is inseparably linked to the life story of St. John Baptist de La Salle and the worldwide educational movement of which, on his own admission, he was the largely unwitting founder. It is then both from the deeds and the writings of de La Salle that we can expect to understand what this distinctive characteristic of Lasallian spirituality is. So this is what I've done. I've picked up two moments from the life of St. John Baptist de La Salle, which we're going to look into, to help us understand more what this Lasallian spirituality is all about. And I think the first and most important thing is the context in which de La Salle lived. De La Salle lived at a time when there was the post-reformation, so this is 17th century France. And before this time, religion and religious life was very much in the monastery, away from the corruption of the world, where you go and just pray to God all day long, cut off from reality. But at about this time, we have the new religious congregations springing up that were not the same. They actually wanted to go and work among the people and to find God and Christ there in the real world by helping and serving others, especially the vulnerable and the poor. And this is what attracted St. John Baptist de La Salle. In fact, St. John Baptist de La Salle a particular moment in his life, did not follow uh, a brilliant career in the church. He uh, joined the church, he was ordained, and he was named a canon of Reims Cathedral, a very important cathedral. Reims was where the emperors were crowned in the Middle Ages. Um, and he had a brilliant career set out for him, but a chance encounter by with Adrian Niel, a layman who was um, opening schools for poor boys, set de La Salle in a different direction completely. And when Nia left Reims to open more schools, de La Salle assumed leadership of the teachers, who were very rough and hardly literate, barely literate men. Mm -hmm. And looking at the teachers and seeing the potential of improving the teachers lot and improving even the, the, the human quality of the teachers led him to the, um, the institution, the, the, the founding of the Institute of our, the brothers, and our Institute, the Institute of the Brothers of the Christian Schools. Okay, 
So this was a very important moment in his life. And here I ask you to reflect a minute and then you're going to share this reflection when you go into your groups. Why, how did you come to be here today? Uh, you are in a Lasallian school or in a Lasallian pastoral center. How, how has your journey, your life story brought you to this point in time to be with us here today? So recall, recall the moment past where you were interviewed for the job, <laughs> where you applied for the job, where you accepted the job. And I invite um, Jo Milea to share her story of how she came to be such an important Lasallian working with us today. Well, funnily enough, I actively sought out um, going to work at De La Salle because I was a former student there. And when I was doing my teacher training, there was just something about my memories and my experiences and the, the way that I, I recalled all of my time at De La Salle that just made me want to go back. You know, when I was going into different schools, nothing else really um, compared. And I think, it, you know, there were a few significant brothers that taught me at the time, but other members of staff too, you can see, looking back now, I can see that they had that spirit and that way about them, which was attractive and which brought you on and, you know, which made you feel like you belong. So I, I think that was what made me want to go back. And now I probably won't leave. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> Thank you, Joe. Thank you. And um, appreciate your own story. Find value in it. Brother Edward always said, God called you here to a Lasallian school for a reason. Just kind of try to find out what it is. So, so the first instance from De La Salle's life uh, was his interest in education, which is your interest too. And I'm choosing a second um, um, instance in his life which is known as the heroic vow, when things went disastrously wrong. Did you have any <laughs> disastrous moments in your life? How did you, how did you manage to overcome them? Did you manage to grow stronger because of them? So here we're going to listen to a short video clip telling us uh, all about De La Salle's dark moments when, um, when reason dictated he should have given up everything, but he didn't. In November of 1691, John Baptist de La Salle found himself and his group of teachers in a dire situation. At that time, he and the brothers had established several schools that provided a Christian education to all children without regard to social class or income. But their ministry was now at risk as opposition to de la salle's work grew and this fragile congregation experienced harassment and lawsuits it was a bleak moment for the struggling movement that would become the brothers of the christian schools we might expect that this overwhelming adversity would be enough for our founder and the brothers to quit or give up the schools However, it was in this new crossroads that in 1691, a strong sense of association emerged among three friends, De La Salle, Brother Voyart, and Brother Drolin. They vowed to keep together for the sake of the mission, even if all others left, and they were obliged to beg for alms and live on bread alone. Together, they would discern what was best for the society of the Christian schools and what God required of them. It came to be known as the Heroic Vow, a statement that radically committed these founding teachers to the work they were called to do. This vow of association and union, pronounced on November 21, 1691, was an act of hope at a time when the work of De La Salle and the early brothers was in serious jeopardy. Surely these three men were fearful that all might be lost. As those around them gave up, they must have questioned themselves and their ministry. Yet, in their dismay, they didn't avoid their difficulties. They didn't try to go around them. De La Salle, Brother Voyart, and Brother Drolin were steadfast. They had the courage and faith to step through their fear and into the light as they committed to each other and their shared mission. So the first instance, in the first instance, De La Salle um, focused on schools, I think was a very important decision for him to take. And now 
he he took a vow of association of working with others and uh, he he put his trust in god and i think these are three things which are at the heart of la salient spirituality in november sorry so quoting brother ramiri again we can um pick on four points which will help us understand the salient spirituality a bit better Brother Ramiri lists the spirit of community. So in the heroic vow, there were three brothers who vowed to stick together, whatever happened. The spirit of faith, it was a leap in the dark. Everything was so bad. The spirit of zeal, we had the word steadfast in the video, enthusiasm. And finally, Lasalle's spirituality is very practical as we shall see later. We're going to take each of these three points and um, look at them a bit closer. All right. So first is the spirit of community. It's interesting that Brother Ramiri puts this first, and I think there's a great insight in doing this. It is the sense of the we instead of the I that characterizes much of what Lasallians do. The decisions of those attending the 1686 assembly in Reims was that they would henceforth be called brothers. In itself, this title for consecrated men who were not clerics was not new, but their definition of it was new. They saw themselves as brothers to one another in the community, so it's an equal relationship. And older brothers to so the young people whom they saw as confided to their care. There's also sort of the brotherly relationship. So it's right from the start, De La Salle knew the importance of relationships. And it's epitomized in the word brother. Okay. So um, as I also do not want to do things on my own, <laughs> I've got short video clips now of colleagues who last year, so some of their status might have changed, are going to give us their opinion about um, these three points. So the first one is community. I was asked why is it important to work together? Mm -hmm. That's a very easy question in actual fact, Ms. Vella, because when we say working together uh, in Les Alien literature, we use the word working in association. The very fact that the founder um, got together with a number of persons who became, who eventually became the first community, and together in association worked towards a mission. The mission over the years um, changed. Um, let's not forget the institute is 300 years plus old, so the mission over the years changed. But the idea of working together is pretty much still at the basis of our uh, Lesalian charism. By working together, we mean that we all work together, all the members of staff. Everybody has a part in the mission. The mission changed, yes, it's true. But uh, the way we work together shouldn't have changed in actual fact because we work together as a team, work together as a one La Salle to achieve such such mission. And that is, I think, very, very important. But how do we achieve the, the association? How do we achieve working in association over a number of good years at the La Salle and being a La Salle in myself? I think that caring for each other is one of the most important ways in which we learn how to work together. When you are a part of a team, um, we usually mention the word, you are part of the family. You have to feel comfortable. You have to feel loved. You have to feel understood. And that is when working in association uh, is possible, working in association to reach our mission. I think that is very, very basic, very, very critical, and very, very important for us as Lasallians. The spirit of faith. Look at everything but with the eyes of faith, not to do anything but in view of God and to attribute all to God. So do I 
believe in a God, whatever my understanding of a God is, or however far advanced my understanding of, of, of this whole concept is. Does my view of the world include God? I do believe that God is with me every step of the way. I think it would be easier to prove by giving examples of when he was there during difficult times. But I've started adding a short prayer in my daily prayer. And it is, God, show me what you want from me and show me what you want me to do. And I've been noticing some, some changes. Well, they were always there, but I've been noticing them now. I, I see God in every child who comes to me for help. I see God in that in that colleague who comes to me with an idea for something that we can do for our for the rest of the of of the stuff. I I see it in every problem that that um, a child can come up to me with. Yes, he is there, and he is guiding me and showing me what he wants me to do. And the spirit of zeal, this zeal for those confided to their care will lead the aliens to try to touch the hearts of those with whom they work so that they may more easily lead them to God and to fulfill their potential as human beings. We are passionate about what we do because we aim at doing what is right for our students and their families as well as for our fellow colleagues, because doing what's right is our passion. We feel we belong to a community where there is love and respect. And just like any other family, we may not always agree with each other, but we aim towards reaching the same goal, that of touching hearts. Sometimes you just need one person with a great idea and soon many others will support the initiative with great enthusiasm and determination. And the result of great teamwork is that of touching hearts. We aim at making a difference in a holistic way. We are less aliens. One La Salle, one dream, one goal. And lastly, ours is practical spirituality. And I love this quotation, which I'd like to share with you. And it's very, very heartening, I think. Make no distinction between the duties of your profession and those that refer to your salvation and perfection. So, so our prayer is our work. Be convinced that you will never achieve your salvation more surely, nor acquire a greater perfection than by fulfilling well the duties of your profession, provided you do so with the view of God's will. So I think this is something so beautifully Lasallian. Our, our vocation, our, our profession as educators, that is our link with God. Here are many uh, quotations which are Lasallian. You might know some of them already, or you might not. They might be, they might be new to you. They, they are taken from the writings of St. John Baptist de La Salle. And I just invite you to go through them for a minute or two. Because it is in our daily encounters in La Salian schools or pastoral centers that we are asked to live our spirituality. Am I aware that I am doing God's work when that difficult student confronts me and challenges my authority? when half the class don't hand in their homework? What do I do when a colleague of mine undermines my work? How do I react when a parent lies about me? Can I use this moment to help the person in front of me become a better version of himself or herself? Can I, in La Salian terms, save souls? So now I come to a, a very interesting, um, a witness given by Michael Smith. Michael Smith is uh, an American Lasallian. 
and uh, he shared his his story with us. And I find it very, very uplifting. So I didn't come to La Salle University to be an evangelist. I came to teach communication in the country's fifth largest media market. Probably you went to a school to teach maths or to teach physics or to teach biology. However, uh, Michael realized then that things change. So after 14 years, though, I have come to understand that commitments have transformed the way I view the connections between my teaching and my spirituality. This retrospective sense making represents one important aspect of La Salle spirituality, recognizing God's hand in the choices that we make and trusting in God's providence as we commit ourselves in service to students. So um, he also goes on to say, which is, I think, rather nice. Um, it's one thing for a community of brothers to commit themselves to these ideals, but how do we sustain the spirit when we go home? Not to a community of brothers bound by vows of association, but to families where spouses constantly remind us of our matrimonial vows and children who, while reminding us of God's holy gifts, can also be holy terrors <laughs> to their siblings. But in my life, says Michael Smith, as an La Salle educator, sustaining the spirit of faith involves seeing the practical connections between one's life and one's work. So that's why I told you start from your story, who you are, because that is what you are called to be. That is your La Salle spirituality, who you are, both at home and at work. La Salle spirituality is an active, practical spirituality. While reflection nourishes the soul, faith without action is lifeless. Brother Ramiri wrote, the Salian spirituality is lived through the activities which are typical of an educator's day. The Salian educators practice their spirituality through everything from the preparation of classes to the interaction with students. I'm coming now to the, the second question I'd like you to discuss in group, what I call your entry point. So you are in a Lasallian school or pastoral center and you've come across these three words, faith, service and community. They are the three, three pillars of our Lasallian spirituality and one of them probably attracts you. Hopefully all three do, but not necessarily so. That would be your way of connecting with the La Salle in the world. In my case, for example, uh, when I first joined the La Salle, it was the sense of service. I had just spent a year teaching uh, uh, in Kenya as a lay missionary. And for me, I wanted to look for something uh, to sustain me in that area. So the sense of service to others, that was what first drew me to La Salle spirituality. It could be the idea of community, communion, community, which, which you find very, very helpful in your milieu. It could be faith. So I'd like you to reflect which one of these three words is your entry point, the way you connect with uh, La Salle spirituality. And just to conclude now, sum up, so today we are seeking to understand what it means to be Lasallians. We are all at different stages in our life journey. Okay, some of us might have been born as Catholics and raised in Catholic families. We might not, we might not even um, have any spiritual background at all. It does not matter. It's not a problem because the differences are actually a richness since we accompany one another and sustain one another along the way. What matters is that you have started a journey and you are willing to take one step at a time to arrive where you are meant to be. Okay, so La Salle's own life was marked by a profound sense of openness to discerning and doing God's will as he saw it. He recognizes that he was led by God who guides all things with wisdom and serenity and whose way it is not to force the inclinations of persons. He will to commit me, said La Salle, entirely to the development of the schools. He did this in an imperceptible manner, 
Uh, perhaps that is what's happening in your life. You're not realizing the steps you are taking and over a long period of time. So that one commitment led to another in a way that I did not foresee at the beginning. Okay, so thank you. That's the end of my presentation. I'll stop sharing now and uh, give the mic back to Joanna. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mariella. It's just wonderful to listen to you and you've given us lots of food for thought there. And we'll have a brief moment in breakout rooms, so around about eight minutes or so, and then we'll just come back together with a couple of minutes to go at the end. Thanks, everyone. So very conscious of um, finishing on time. Um, I hope you had some good discussions and good news. It's still light outside, which is amazing. Um, so just to, to wrap up today's session for us then, um, it doesn't matter if any of us don't have a spiritual or religious reference point, meaning and purpose can still be found in the Lasallian Five Core Principles and in Lasallian education more generally. And you have to know that that's fine. There's no second class citizens in the Lasallian family. And we invite you to keep an open mind as to where your journey can take you on all different levels, personally, professionally, spiritually. And on our part, we aspire to always make available to you a network of people who care, who care for you, who care for your students, care for your profession. Um, a network that accepts you as who you are. And next time in our last session on March 22nd, um, we'll talk a little bit more about the importance of community um, and the Lasallian family in general. So thank you once again for being here today um, and hope you enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll see you again in March. <laughs>